Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Coming up, you're going to see a short clip of Austin in his actual plane, and then we're going to cut to X-Plane 12, where Austin will show you his plane in X-Plane 12, which has been just beautifully modeled. Now, do keep in mind, this is an early release version of X-Plane 12, and you're going to see things that are not perfect in the scenery. Uh, and maybe other things that are not, are not perfect, so do bear that in mind that you're getting a bit of a sneak peek here, an early look, um, but it's not done. If it were done, they'd be selling it right now, so it is not done, and do bear that in mind, and hopefully you enjoy the video. Show me the complete opposite of the Airbus, if you would please. That I, looks familiar, by the way. I thing. thought you'd never ask. Okay, so this is November 844 X-Ray, which is a uh, home-built airplane that I actually built, and or, or helped build. And then, yes, it's my name on the nose, thank you, since I'm the builder yeah. of the airplane. So, so what happened <laughs> is he went out there and they said, here, hold this <laughs> screwdriver for five seconds and take, let's take your picture and then you get out of here. <laughs> I did a lot more than that. Trust me, I did a lot more than that. And I have all the pictures of my work uh, at AustinMeyer.com. So go to AustinMeyer.com. There's a section of for I got all the pictures of me neck deep in sandpaper, sanding and cutting and filling and all that. Well, because no government in their right mind would certify this thing. This thing weighs less than a Toyota Camry, but it has 850 horsepower. And uh, it's just, it basically could not be certified by any government. And so you have to build it yourself, right? It's like a kit car, right? If you just say to hell with every safety regulation, pretty much, you can't produce the car. It has to be a kit car, right? If you're going to, you know, just bypass all the regulations. This airplane bypasses all the rules. All the certification rules are just bypassed. It, it is not a certified airplane which means that no one is allowed to build it and sell it to me. It's against the law. You're not allowed to build this and sell it to someone. You have to build it yourself. Just That's the level of crazy. This plane uh, yeah, yeah, probably about six or seven people. But uh, there's only 50 of these airplanes. In... Oh, yeah, okay, so Mike's question is, does anyone else have the airplane with this engine? And the answer is yes. It normally comes with 750 horsepower, but I got a special engine mod to take me up to 850 horsepower. And, um, about five or six people, Spratt and Whitney PT6A-42. And uh, about maybe five or six or seven people have the airplane with this horsepower. And this, there's about 50 of these airplanes or so flying in the world. So they make the Bugatti Veyron look common. So uh, it's, it's a real, real fun, fun, fun machine. And it's crazy. And it might not be the safest airplane in the world. But it's, uh, and it's certainly not certified, but boy is it fun. And it has, I mean, the autopilot like barely works. It barely has an autopilot. And so, I mean, and there's no hydraulic system, okay? Well, the only hydraulic system there is is for the landing gear. There's no hydraulic system to the controls. However you move the joystick with your own strength, look at my little head bobbing around in there. However you move the joystick with your own strength, that's how the flight controls move. And they move as fast as you can move them, and they move wherever you move them. There is no flight control computer. There is no hydraulic system. There are no limits. There is no nothing. And the autopilot can just barely make it hold altitude. It is an engine and a piece of carbon fiber and it does exactly what you tell it to do end of discussion end of is, discussion the point is it's the opposite of it's the opposite of the airbus a330 the absolute opposite uh, ironically it's not that much slower <laughs> it goes mach 0.5 whereas the airbus goes mach 0.75 or mach 0.7 so the airbus is only you know it's not that much faster okay so um Let's get a little bit of flaps down. You'll notice I'm kind of going off to the side here. That's just because uh, we're kind of slipping on the ice. And even at idle, the, the uh, prop wash is significant. I haven't even added power yet. We're still just idle. And then we can kind of get in the cockpit. This is exactly the cockpit of my airplane. I would go so far, I'm right down to the pens. The pens are from uh, the, the fixed space operator over on the right up in uh, Burlington where I got them. So uh, everything in this airplane is down 
I mean, down to the color of the pens and the carpet and everything else, all the switch layout is exactly the same. Oh, and interesting, I designed the cockpit in the real airplane. And so uh, there's no other cockpit in the world quite like this. It's my own cockpit design uh, that we did in the real airplane, which you can do when you build it yourself. And um, and we simulated it perfectly here. So the cockpit's one of a kind, but it's very nicely laid out. You know, we've got about 55 knots. I should mention, we're, I have not actually added power. We're still at idle. All right, we're having this discussion <laughs> at idle, and we're up at 57 knots. <laughs> Wow. All right, so we're past the takeoff speed of a Cessna, and I haven't actually added any power yet. We're still idling. Okay, so let's uh, let's get out here. Oh, and we take off in this airplane at about 40% power. If we went to full power, it would be more torque than the flight controls could handle. The thing would wind up just flipping over. So we, we do a 40% power takeoff. We only use power up at high altitudes once we've got enough air uh, going over the airframe to absorb that kind of power output. And uh, Rodrigo Fernandez, he uh, built this airplane for me in X-Plane. And uh, boy, did he do an incredible job. I mean, when I look at this thing flying, I mean, it is no different from the real airplane. No different at all. Uh, I mean, I feel, I mean, I might as well be in the airplane. So get our gear up. Can I tap the brakes? Maybe stop the wheels from spinning. There we go. And, uh, and I'm looking at all these parts. I actually helped attach the airplane myself when I was helping build it. We get the flaps. Climb rate right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Five, uh, four thousand feet per minute. That's about what the real one does. About four thousand feet per minute, and uh, you know it all depends on the temperature. And then of course because this is uh, you know all my own flight control, you know I can do absolutely anything I want. You know if if uh, the laws of physics say it can be done, then it can be done. Now, I should mention I've never done a roll in my real airplane because uh, I got a wife and a daughter. So yeah, the airplane's all fast and all, but I do operate it very, very safely in reality. If you so I don't this, mess around in the real plane. If you had this plane in your 20s. Oh, I wouldn't be alive now. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be dead, I'd be dead. If I had this plane in my 20s, I wouldn't be alive now. But these days, even though of course, yeah, I'm hot dogging with the sim and all that. When I'm flying the real airplane, uh, all of a sudden I start operating it smoothly and carefully and safely. Your so. wife would probably smack you. If you oh yeah. Remotely close to oh yeah, just a... but trust me, she wouldn't have to because I basically I'm well aware that I'm in my 50s and I only get a certain number of days left in this world with my wife and my daughter because nobody lives forever. So I do every dang thing I can do to live as long as I can. I do not want to take risks. So these days, I mean, I eat healthier, I exercise, um, I operate my airplane safely. I mean, I'm bending over backwards to just maximize, maximize my safety. Um, and yeah, so the airplane's kind of crazy and it's not government certified and all that, but I still operate the actual airplane safely. And I've taken plenty of people flying and they can all attest to that. So um, it's just so cool to have complete and total uh, control. And uh, why don't I run through the switches in the cockpit real quick? Because that's uh, kind of cool. Um, let's see, already 241 knots. Okay, so what we've got here, you know, first of all, in, in the video, does, does it record where the mouse is? Does the mouse show up in the video, do you know? Yeah. Oh, this, yeah, it will, it will, because it just switched to a different mouse. It just switched to it a down, will, I, it yeah. probably shows up. So here we have ground power, and this ground power switch is what we flip on if we have somebody on the ground plugging in the ground power cord to charge up the batteries for the engine start. And I have that, even though not all airplanes have it, because one time I watched somebody with a ground power cord do this and kind of jiggle the cable to try and get it, you know, into the airplane. And my avionics going click, 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 and flickering on and off while he was doing it. And I was like, no, 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 no. So I'm never going to see that happen again. And so we added the ground power switch after that. So and you wait until he's done fumbling around and, and then you turn then it on. And then I turn it on. Okay. And now that I do that, everything works just like I like it. And this is one of the reasons I love experimental airplanes so much. You know, it's not because, oh, it's so fast and it's not government certified. No, no, no. I can do whatever I want to to make it exactly the airplane I want it to be. And this is an example of that. I added the ground power switch when I saw how uh, ground power was not taken care of well otherwise. We have battery one and two, generator and alternator, DC power. And then here we have door seals. So if we turn this off, I'm not gonna do it in flight. <laughs> I'm thinking like I'm in the real airplane here. Then the, the airplane would depressurize, you see, because that keeps air pressure inside. Then the igniters, uh, we don't really need those on. And the fuel pump, 
That's just a backup but, backup pump. But so do you have to wear off. oxygen over? To no, it's a pressurized airplane. So it's, it's a totally pressurized airplane. Pressurized. Yeah, totally pressurized. And it'll tell you if, or you'll, I guess you'll. Know, well, let's say yeah, an alert a comes slow up. Beat. Well, look, it's right here. There's a cabin altitude. Look, there's okay. a cabin altitude and cabin ah, differential right there. Okay. So, and if those ever go out of bounds, they'll start going beep 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 because I have had depressurizations, and this thing will tell you. You start turning red and flashing and beeping, so you know when you're depressurized. But thanks to the bleed air and the door seals, it holds it holds cabin altitude. And this is the engine start this is the engine start button off a honda s2000 i wanted to get the engine start button off of a ferrari but ferrari would not sell me the engine start button they would only sell the entire steering wheel with the button already on it's like three thousand dollars like no 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 so instead of a ferrari start button i got a honda s2000 start button and i think it's the coolest engine start button there is in aviation right it's this big red you know when you push it to start it so what would the normal start button be? it would just look like one of these other switches so oh. boring what, you got an 850 horsepower engine, you want to engage the starter with a light switch? Give me a break. That's not cool. So I made it so when you start this engine, you know you're starting it. So yeah, I got a Honda S2000 start switch. And then we got, what, uh, nav and strobe and landing light. And then our bleed air, which, of course, we turned... Hey, I wonder, if, if, if Daniel, if we simulated the bleed... Yep, I turned off the bleed air. Look at the oh, cabin yeah, altitude starting to race up. Let's turn the bleed air back on, if that's okay. And then the cabin dump. And so what's interesting about these switches is it's all a logical flow. Start with the ground power if you need a ground start, which you usually don't. Then turn on your batteries and turn your generator and alternator. Then your DC power to the pressurization system. And you just work from left to right. First you turn the door seals and the igniters and the fuel pump. Then you hit the start button. Then you turn on your lights. Then you turn on your bleed air. You see, it's a logical, natural flow from left to right. Look how easy that is. And so when you operate this airplane, you start up here in the upper left get all your power to it and work from left to right throughout the start sequence. Then you have your DI switches over here to the right. If you have to move over to the right, you've already screwed up, <laughs> right? Because you have to say, oh no, I need de-ice. Well, then you weren't in control of this, air this flight right from the start. So what a beautiful natural left to right flow. And then you've got the autopilot here, which barely can fly the airplane, we'll turn that off. The landing gear right here where you can't miss it. And then uh, the flaps right around the throttle, right? Right while you're doing the throttle and messing like that with that for takeoff and landing is when you put the flaps down. And so the lay, and that, there we go. I basically gone over everything in the cockpit. You see how okay. simple it is. I've never seen anything marked condition. Before. Condition, right? Okay, so that's that's what we what we what we might call mixture, and that is the uh, if I pull this all the way back, we'll shut the engine down. It's basically all the way forward for high idle, in the middle for low idle, and then all the way back to shut down. And so the end of the flight when it's time to shut down, I pull this back. All right, you may notice the lighting just changed. We've still got the lighting changing in steps. And I don't like it when the lighting changes in steps. I would like a more smooth, you know, continuous lighting. But, uh, you know, that's the thing I guess Ben is uh, still working on. I'm happy. I harassed him about it the other day. He was like, well, it takes a long time to recompute stuff. Um, well, okay. But the day's got to come when we don't have these stepped, you know, the step lighting. But, uh, and speaking of Ben, look at this incredible clouds and lighting he's done. He's really, and this is all physics-based lighting. There's nothing here that's fake. He's actually tracking, Ben is tracking like the electron or the photon, the photon energy of the sun and bouncing it off the materials. And then when Rodrigo, the, uh, the South American artist, uh, he you know put all the right materials and paint and scratches and everything on, on the body. Oh, and I also designed a paint scheme. Yeah, I didn't airplane. notice when I was in front of your plane uh, a couple of weeks ago, there were a lot of little nicks on the lip of the, of the wing. And I think yeah. I saw them. He may have. In here. Yeah, yeah I don't know. If zoom he... right in on there. See yep, them? yep, yep. See he him? did him. And so that's what happens when you basically fly half the speed of sound. It eventually starts taking paint off. And then <laughs> I lent this airplane to a business partner. And when I got it back, like all the paint was ripped off the leading edge. It was like, whoa. Just, it, and so clearly, yeah, so he, he was going half the speed of sound through a rainstorm, right? Which is not illegal, but... You know, some people ask me how fast he works. And I say, let me tell you how fast he works. He freaking ripped the paint off the leading edge of my airplane when I led it to him. That's how fast he works. But, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. So we can have that paint touched up. It's not a problem. But um, so at any rate, yeah, it, it feels, flies, systems. I mean, it is identical to my air evolution. And if you can operate this airplane safely, then you're set to fly my real airplane, which is a pretty rare thing since there's so few of them. And, uh, yeah, and then here we are, you know, in, in, in the cockpit with the view I've seen many times. I got about 450, about 450 hours. One thing so. you, that it is like the uh, Airbus mm -hmm. in that it has a side stick. Yeah, that's one common. True. Thing. That's true. It does have a side stick. Yep. That is true. And uh, yeah, see, you got the little side stick there and then the uh, the throttle. It's it, it is just it is a it is an exact 
copy the real plane. And, uh, oh, see, so here's what's so incredible about this. So, um, this thing is, uh, it goes up to half the speed of sound. Okay, it's a cruise, it's half the speed of sound. Not that much slower than an Airbus, really not much slower at all. But it can fly an approach at 76 knots. And at 76 knot approach, that's half the approach speed of an Airbus, of course, which is one quarter the landing distance. And that's the same approach speed as a Cirrus SR-22, which will get, let me go into any airport. Attention altimeter, like I care about that. So um, what's so fascinating about this airplane is it gives almost all the speed of an airliner in cruise, but with the approach speed of a Cirrus. What does that mean? It means you can get to any airport you want to quickly. Right, an airliner. Or let's talk about a Gulfstream Four. Airport. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. Let's talk about a Gulfstream Four. Let's say I can have either my Evolution or a Gulfstream Four. Where, which is going to get me where I'm going quicker? Well, my airplane can do a lot of runways that a Gulfstream can't, and so this will get me closer to my destination than many business jets. And so I can land in this business jet and grab an Uber. I will get where I am going faster than a lot of people in Gulf Streams going to a more distant airport and then taking a long black car drive. You see? So this actually Because you lets can land at any, literally any airport. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where the Gulf Stream can't. So um, the actual ability to travel in this thing is actually better than a business jet. So one possible figure of merit for an airplane might be how many airports can you go to times how fast can you get to them, right? That's what we use airplanes for. Well, I'm two thirds the speed of any jet, but I can get to four times the airports. Well, if the value of the airplane is equal to how fast you go times the number of airports you can get to, my airplane's more valuable than theirs. In the state of South Carolina, how many airports do you think you could land that Airbus at? <laughs> Three, four, four maybe. And how many four. are there total? There's something like 7,000 in the United States. So it's probably like, like 50, you know, 100 or at least. More than, more than 100. Yeah. yeah. So I have access to airports that airliners are never going to get to. So that's, that's what is like the magical superpower of this airplane. Um, it does whatever you want without any second guessing you. But what's really cool is that lets you go so fast and still get to almost all airports. See, here I am going nice and slow. Yeah, we're down to 64 knots. You see, I've been slowing it down while we're talking. So we're at 64 knots. That is below the approach speed of a Cirrus SR-22. And then my stall dynamics in X-Plane 12 are pretty damn nice. That's just what it's like when you stall the real airplane. Well, there's obviously a lot of work still to do in X-Plane 12, but one thing I can speak to is the stability. We've been running this sim for several hours now, and oh, yeah. it hasn't even hiccuped. Right, well, we're, we now have, we're up to 200 uh, kind of private testers, and then see, look at that stall. Oh, it's so beautiful. It, that's exactly how it feels in the real plane. Um, yeah, so we're up to 200 internal uh, testers now, and I've got about uh, 20 super private party testers that like, are working directly with me. And uh, I mean, we're down to things like getting the anti lock brake logic perfect in airliners uh, from Jan Vogel, for example, who's an airline pilot. But what I really want to see, what I still want to see, I'm not happy with it all, is the roads and the coastline still look way too polygonal and sharp and stupid and left over from the year 1995 or something. So those are the really exciting things we're working on. Um, and uh, and that's happening. I've, I've seen now the images coming out of uh, the, the computer system, my Eastern European guys, where they have literally got the, the terrain going down under the water and then fading out where the water kind of like halfway hides and it fades out under the water. So we're really getting coastlines up to the next generation. And I hope we can do a lot better with the roads too, because I think the roads are terrible. So um, well, and I'm hoping know, we can move the road quality up. We're definitely getting that coastline quality up. We're five years into, uh, or maybe six years into X-Plane 11, and you know, the, the updates and the improvements keep coming. So yeah. you, you know, you get X-Plane 12.0, it's gonna look oh, yeah. a lot different in yeah. three or four years. Yeah, exactly. Or three or four months. Here. Yeah, roads and coastlines, those are, those are the next things. And I think we've done some videos on how good the forests are now. The forests and the trees are absolutely incredible. And, uh, oh, that's kind of cool. And so, yeah, the forests and trees are amazing. And uh, any idea when there's going to be an open beta? Uh, hopefully soon. Uh, that, that's a Ben question. All right, I'll tell you what. So now let's, let's uh, yeah, because I want an open beta, because once we have an open beta, I can sell it and make a little money. Um, 
All right, let's, I'm gonna just aim for a random airport. First, first we're gonna see an airport win. So let's see if I can just find, see, unlike that Airbus, you just find me an airport anywhere and I will instantly uh, put down. All right, let's do a map. Let's just get a map up here and see where we are. Miss, I'll show you how quickly you can change your mind about where you want to go. All right, let's just go to the nearest airport, HPN. Okay, I see HPN, whatever that is, uh, back behind us. So look, I'm just gonna, look at that, a little 100 degree bank angle there, who cares? Although again, in the real airplane, I don't exceed 60 degrees in bank because I have a strong desire to be safe. Uh, but the airplane will do anything you want it to do. And so that lets you just have a uh, crazy time this in Oh, there it is. It's all covered in snow and ice. I didn't know how it's so I wasn't really seeing it very easily. Okay, so fine, we're going to land there. <laughs> you know, and, and everybody should be like, well, wait a minute, we have a whole, you know, long drawn out instrument procedure to go through. Let's see how I land this thing. La -dee -da, la -dee -da. I mean, it's a piece of carbon fiber and a thousand horsepower. It'll surge. 850 is max continuous. It's allowed to surge to a thousand. I'm just going to hop on down through here. Why not? And aerodynamically, the airplane will absolutely do this. I don't, I don't go, I don't make my approaches quite this aggressive in the real plane, of course. <laughs> but aerodynamically, you can do it. It's just, you know, here's the question. What do you want to do? That's the question this airplane asks. What do you want to do? There's no second guessing involved. Drop the thing into beta. I only drop into beta on the ground in the real airplane. Yeah. Look at that. You think I could have done that in the Airbus? <laughs> no. No. Look at that. What is it? 30 seconds ago, I was a mile up and upside down. Touchdown. Brakes. So it just reverses the pitch. Of the yeah, it reverses the pitch. Of the Look at that. Look at me sliding on the ice and the snow. And so now, if you want to see what we just did, what is it? Uh, and again, your keys are ever so slight. Path. There we go. Yeah. There we go. And so, what did that approach look like? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> but who cares? That's what the approach looked like. You could not do that in most airplanes, right? You, you couldn't do it. Look how much, and I didn't, I hardly used up any runway. I hardly used up any runway, and that was coming in at, you know, I was probably doing yeah, 200 knots up there. The, I, yeah. well, I was coming in in a vertical dive. I was coming in a vertical dive, and I hardly used any runway. So that is the magical power of this airplane. It's just got so much wing, so much power, and with that big prop, it will simply do whatever you want. And no, no second guessing. This is what happens, you have all the wing, all the power, all the prop, and no second guessing. What does it do? Whatever you make it do. So uh, this is a great, great, great plane to fly next plane. Because you can do your low and slow type flying, and also you can cover great distances. And what's so interesting is that's exactly why the airplane is valuable in the world.